Thank you for clicking on today's video. I'm going to be showcasing you guys this smooth 3D effect that you can use on any video that you want to. But I want to shout out 11%. He did this tutorial and it inspired me to make my own. So if you are new here, hit the subscribe button, smash that bell notification. I would appreciate it a lot. If you are interested in any sort of presets to speed up your workflow, feel free to go in the link in my description and download yours today. Now, once you have chosen a clip you want to do this effect on, you are ready to go. Like I always say, I do some of my my effects in Premiere and some of my effects in After Effects which is why I always do right click and replace with After Effects Composition which is what I have already done okay so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna find a spot where we basically want our effect to land into and I feel like right here is perfect because this is where the chain kind of stops dangling and goes into center if that makes sense so we're just gonna click Control shift D on the keyboard and that is gonna split your layer and then we're just going to go one frame before the layer ends here on this dangling part and we're going to go to around here just before it ends and we are going to right click and go to time and then you're going to go to freeze frame and that's basically just going to give you a nice freeze frame and then the chain starts dangling the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to do a nice mask out of this chain and i'm just going to do the main part of the chain so once you've done your mask it should look something like this and then we're just going to duplicate this layer and then we are going to delete the mask on here on the third layer so that now we have our screen back in the background but with the masked out layer okay so we're going to make sure we have our mask layer right here and we are going to go to the 3d icon which is right here and we're going to click on that so now we have our mask but we also have the 3d button toggled so now it should look something like this because we've got our mask layer here as you can see and we've got the freeze frame on top of it next thing you want to do is go down to your layer and go to the 3d icon here and make sure you tick that box so now our subject is 3d so once you have toggled the 3d icon you then want to go to transform here and you want to go to anchor point and you just want to move your mask up towards I'd say the middle of this first circle right here so just around here I'd say now what you want to do is basically just drag your subject that you masked out and put up to this anchor point back down to where it was it doesn't have to be in the same exact position but just something rough so I'd say like that so the next part is actually quite interesting you want to make sure you go to transform on your layer and just start to keyframe all of these here up until Z rotation from position. So once they are all keyframed, you can now start to move around and see what sort of movement you wanna get. So if we moved it over here, let's just say on the edge of the screen as if it is coming out of the camera frame. So I'd say just around here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep it in this frame here so we can see what the rotations look like. So I'm gonna start with the Z rotation. And as you can see, we can just get one spin like this one spin like that would be cool and then for the y rotation you can get something like this where it just spins through once like that and for the x rotation i can show you what this would look like just like a roll like that so now once you have your movements and your positioning correct on how you want it we can start to keyframe it towards the end of the effect so I'm going to have it on the edge of the screen like this as if it's just coming through. So something like that. And then just towards the end of our effect, I'm going to highlight all the keyframes that we've just done. And I'm going to right click and press reset. But for the positioning, of course, because we have done our anchor point, we want to make sure that we just bring this down and kind of bring it back into position of where it was. So then when it goes into the effect we are all good so something like this this is what our effect would look like now if i bring this in a little bit more because i can see the positioning would be much better if we had the chain come in like that now i'm not going to lie to you i'm not really liking the way the rotation is looking on one of them so we're just going to take off the keyframe from z rotation and we're going to see how that looks and that looks sick that is so clean that is sick but obviously guys the way it's looking the performance of it the movement it's not that great so we're going to highlight the keyframes and we're going to press f9 on our keyboard and then we are going to make sure that our motion blur is turned on okay because that is very important guys if you don't do them two things you're going to be missing out on a lot through this effect so as you can see that looks 10 times better 
Next thing we can do is go to effects and type in glow and then we could choose any sort of glow that you might want to use but just for everyone inside After Effects we are going to use the normal glow and place it onto our layer and then when it comes in we can kind of see what sort of effect we're getting so we can keep the intensity to where it is and then play around with the threshold to 1.5 maybe but the chain does look a little bit orange so we're just going to go to hue and we are going to drag that onto our layer and then we're going to decrease the saturation just so that we can still keep our look that we want we can up the glow radius as well and now we got a nice glow on our subject which is perfect so now the next thing that you actually want to do is basically just go one frame before the effect ends which is right here and you just want to basically keyframe your glow intensity and your glow threshold so that when we get towards the end here let's just press u on the keyboard so we bring up all the keyframes when we get towards the end right here we're just going to go to glow intensity put that at zero and then we're going to go to glow threshold and put that at zero so that now it's just giving it a nice fade out towards the end let's just highlight this first and f9 i'm just going to adjust it ever so slightly so i'd say around let's just say around 50 on the desaturation so then when it goes in yeah that's perfect that's much better so that the color of the chain doesn't completely change but we've also got that nice fade out on the glow so once you've added your glow and your saturation you'll have something that looks just like this okay and you guys can make this way cleaner this is just a template for you guys to follow the next thing you want to do is just press ctrl and highlight all your keyframes and your layers like this and then we're going to right click and we're going to press pre-compose and we're just going to name this 3d layer next thing you want to do is right click go to new and go to camera and then we're going to go down to transform and we're basically just going to create like some sort of zoom out feature here so it's going to be like it's zooming out of the chain but then as it's zooming out we see this movement of the chain falling back in place which will look kind of sick so once you've keyframed everything you just want to move your dial until the chain lands back in shot so i'd say around here and just drag your keyframes towards that area and go back to the start and then this is where we're going to position everything so you might want to zoom in a little bit and then you might want to use these tools by zooming in so that now look we have a nice zoom out but again we want to just add a little bit of a orientation here so that when it zooms out it's just got a nice spin on it like a nice slow spin and then we could just highlight our keyframes press f9 on the keyboard and now when we look at that that's very smooth so now we are back in premiere pro and i'm basically just gonna add some source to this effect so as soon as it lands here we're just gonna go to adjustment layer and i'm gonna show you guys something that you can add to this just to make this effect look even better so we're gonna trim this adjustment layer to around there i'm gonna go to effects i'm gonna go to presets and i'm gonna go to my intensity preset pack and we are going to choose v1 bass bump and we're gonna see how this looks when our chain lands in so that bass bump was pretty nice but i feel like we can get something going on for a little bit longer you can just keep adjusting this to the way you want it to look so if we wanted it to be even more longer that would be our bass bump and i feel like that looks way better in my opinion way better that looks clean and the last thing we're going to do is just add a spark overlay onto this and you can get any from YouTube and I've just got this one because this color does in fact go with the chain so I feel like the spark is only right it's gonna work perfectly well so what we want to do is basically just move our dial until we get to the point where the chain lands back in frame but before we do anything else we just want to go to layer make sure we are selected and go to blending mode which is right here and then go to add so now we're gonna be able to see our effect and then we can just drag the layer across to here and you'll be able to see the spark okay which is right there and then we can just simply control shift d for me delete this and then once we've done that we can kind of scale this up a little bit scale it up so that you can see 
the spark happening and position it in a nice area where you want it something like this and then what we can do is we can add a mask onto this and we just want to mask around where this spark is happening just so that we don't get any harsh edges on this overlay and we're just going to bring it to around 13 something like that so then now when we got our chain landing back in place it's got a sick spark effect to it and if you want to you can go to effects if your effect isn't really that bright you can go to exposure in effects and just slowly bring up the exposure on your overlay which i'm gonna push to about 0.70 so then we'll have something like that bang and that looks really sick it's just these light touches that makes an effect stand out a lot more we're gonna use two versions of this in the video but i am very happy with the way that this effect turned out if you guys want to see more videos like this make sure you're subscribed locked in we are posting for the whole month of july and i'll see you guys in the next video love